Hello learners, welcome back to the world of economics and today I Ritu Gupta am going to take you through to the world of money. Money an important aspect of our lives. We all work for money, we all live it seems for money. So let us understand money and its role into the system of economics. In this session you will learn the meaning and difficulties of barter system, the need for money by the society, the functions of money, forms of money, paper currency and coins, currencies of different countries and India and the meaning of exchange rate. What were we doing? Before money came, it was the barter system. That is, we were exchanging goods and services with the help of the barter system. Now, what is barter exchange? Barter exchange refers to the exchange of one commodity for another. That is, exchange of one kind of goods and service for another kind of goods and service directly without any involvement of money. The barter system needed say apples to be exchanged for wheat, fruit to be exchanged for some other object that the tribals needed or say for a hen. However, the barter system faced such problems. These problems were the double coincidence of wants was not there. There was lack of divisibility of goods. There was lack of a common measure of value. And fourthly, there was a problem in storage of value. Let us understand each of these problems one by one. The lack of double coincidence of wants. If somebody who needed to purchase a camera and had a guitar to barter for it needed to find the one who needed a guitar and was willing to sell the camera and this placed a lot of problem. The double coincidence of wants implies that the two individuals are in the possession of such goods which they are willing to exchange for the satisfaction of their wants. It means that the barter system can only work when both buyer and seller are ready to exchange each other's goods. Double coincidence of wants is very rare. The second problem with the barter system was that there was lack of divisibility of goods. Certain goods are not physically divisible into small units. Suppose a person has a horse and he wants an ice cream. How much of horse can be traded for ice cream? Horse cannot be divided into several pieces. It was very difficult to exchange goods that were not divisible. We can see the visual of a horse and an ice cream. Can you even imagine how these can be traded with each other? The third problem with the barter system was that there was a lack of common measure of value. All commodities are not of equal value. If sugar and milk need to be exchanged, then it is difficult to decide how much sugar is needed to exchange with one liter of milk. There is no common measure or unit of value of goods and services in which an exchange ratio can be expressed. And so this creates a problem with the barter system. Let us come to the fourth problem that the barter system had and that was to do with the storage of goods. There was lack of store of value in the barter system. Storing of wealth for further use is a problem because most goods like vegetables, wheat, milk, etc. do not possess durability. That is, 
they deteriorate with the passage of time. Storage of goods requires resources, time, security and effort. Here you can see the image of a go down and a security guard needed to guard the goods that we wish to store for future use. So the barter system had all these problems to take care of and hence the way out was the birth of money. Money is anything which is generally accepted by the society as a medium of exchange, measure of value, store of value and standard of deferred payment. There was a poem that my teacher used to recite sometimes in the class that money has measures for a medium, a value, a standard, a store. So if you want you can remember this because it's going to help you understand the functions of money. Money as we can see is a medium of exchange, a measure of value, a store of value and a standard for deferred payment. We need to understand each of these functions individually. Let's come to the first one, the medium of exchange. Money can be used to make payment for all transactions of goods and services. It is the most important feature of money. Money has the quality of general acceptability. So all the exchange takes place in terms of money. Money is received by the seller who sells the good. Money is paid by the buyer who buys the good. You pay rupees 10 to buy a pen. The seller receives rupees 10 from you by selling the pen. So a pen is exchanged for rupees 10. And this is the purpose of money. That is, it is a value of measure. It is a, and this is the purpose of money. It is a measure of value, a unit of account. Money works as a common denominator. It helps in calculating relative prices of goods and services. Due to this reason, it is regarded as a unit of account. By reducing the value of all goods and services to a single unit, that is price, it becomes very easy to find out the exchange ratio between them and compare their prices. Money is a standard of deferred payment. It means that it acts as a standard for payments which are to be made in future. Every day millions of transactions take place in which payments are not made immediately. Money encourages such transactions and helps in capital formation and economic development because in this form we can store money for future use and money as we can see is evolving fast. The store of value function of money. Money can be stored yes in piggy banks or in banks as our accounts Money as a store of value means that money can be used to transfer purchasing power from present to the future. Money is a way to store wealth. Although wealth can be stored in other forms also, but money is the most economic and convenient way. Have you heard of the word liquidity? Yes, that is what makes money so convenient because it is easily and readily available, it is convenient. It provides security to individuals to meet contingencies, unpredictable emergencies and to pay future debts. Let us now understand the changing forms of money. The old forms of money as you can see have been evolving from cattle, to salt, to seashells and then to various metallic coins 
the hole in between so they could be strung or put into a kind of a necklace form and the modern forms yes they are paper currency and notes and of course the now evolved electronic money. The diagram here explains how money has evolved from cattle or salt to gold coins, silver coins, copper coins and now paper notes and coins and very soon it will be paperless money. Let us now understand the currency of a country. Currency notes and coins of India are valid only in India and not in other countries. Every country has its own currency. If you visit other countries, then you have to exchange Indian currency with the currency of the country you are visiting. Every country keeps a name and symbol for its currency as per the decision of its government. Here, just so that we can understand better, we have some countries with their currencies and the symbols of these currencies. First one is the United States of America. It has its currency as dollar and the symbol as you can see is a S vertically cut. The European Union which is a combination of various countries of Europe has Euro and it has symbol as this and it is a kind of an E with a double horizontal cut. The UK or the United Kingdom has its currency as pound and it is a kind of an L cut from the middle horizontally. This is the symbol. Then is Japan. Its currency is the yen. It is a Y which is again cut horizontally in the middle. Having understood these countries, their currencies and symbols, we now need to throw a little more light on our own Indian currency. In India, we have paper notes in the denomination of 1, 2, 5, 10, 20, 50, 100, 500 and 1000. And our latest symbol for the rupee is this. The exchange rate, that is the foreign exchange rate. The rate at which one currency can be exchanged for the other is known as the foreign exchange rate. For example, 1 US dollar equals rupees 85. This is the exchange rate between the dollar and the rupee. The exchange rate is required when we decide to travel or to trade with other countries. With this, we come to the end of our today's session on money. In today's session, you have learned about the meaning and difficulties of the barter system, need for money by the society, the functions of money, the forms of money, paper currency and coins, currencies of different countries and India especially, and the meaning of exchange rate. Hope this session gives you a better understanding of what we all are really wanting more and more in our lives, money. Thank you and enjoy your study of economics. All the best.